Hi guys, it's Robin, and welcome back to The Robin's Nest. Unless it's your first time here, then hit that subscribe button down below. Alright, today on my channel, I decided I'm going to attempt to make another cake style that I've never made before, because it wouldn't be true Robin's Nest fashion without me stepping outside my comfort zone a little bit. So that's why we're going to attempt to make the super popular mirror glaze cake. And since Easter's right around the corner, I thought it would be a great idea to make it look like a decorative Easter egg. So I hope you guys will stick around, and I hope you enjoy the video. Well, let's get into it. Alright, so before we begin our mirror glaze, we need to prep and ice our cake and get it off to the fridge to chill because I read it's very important to make sure we have a very chilled cake to work with when we're pouring our mirror glaze later. So I am just going to start by flipping over our cake. And then I'm just going to use my cake leveler to level it out. So since our cake is going to have an egg shape, I'm just going to use my cake board, which I've already cut into the egg shape, as my template for the cake because we want our cake to be the same size as the cake board so when we pour our mirror glaze over it later, it's just going to drip right off the edge. So I'm just going to carefully cut this out and then we'll fill our layers. So now we're going to take our cake board and we're going to put a little bit of icing on the bottom. And we're going to spread that out. And then we're going to attach one of our cake layers. Next, we're gonna fill our layers by taking some chocolate icing, and we're just gonna fill in the center with a nice thin coat and spread it out. And once we get it nice and smooth, I'm gonna create a dam around the outside so we can put our filling in the center. Right, so for my filling, I decided I wanted a little bit of cookie crunch. So I mixed up some chocolate cookie crumbs with a little bit of butter. It was about two tablespoons of melted butter. And I just mixed this all up and I'm going to spread it all out in the middle of the cake. And then we're going to cover it up and put on our buttercream. So I finished filling my layers and I didn't quite like the way it looked. So I trimmed a little bit off the edges and rounded it a little bit to make it look a little bit more like an egg. So I'm gonna clean this up and get rid of all these crumbs and when we come back, we're gonna put on a nice clean white coat of buttercream icing. All right, so this next part is gonna be a bit of a challenge for me because I wanna make sure I have a really smooth finish for when I pour on my mirror glaze. And because I chose chocolate for my Easter egg on the inside, I don't wanna see any crumbs through my white icing. So I'm going to use a piping bag to make sure I get a nice, thick, generous layer of icing on there. And then we're gonna use our offset spatula to spread it all out. And then I'm going to further perfect it and smooth it with my makeshift smoother here. All right, we finished that part and I think it looks really good. I don't have any crumbs in my icing and it's nice and smooth. So the next thing we need to do, like I said, is get it really, really cold. So you need to put it in the fridge for about an hour or in the freezer for 20 to 30 minutes. So we're gonna get ours off to the freezer and we'll be right back. All right, so now it's time for the fun part, our mirror glaze. Now, since this is the first time that I'm ever making this, I wanted to use a really simple recipe because I didn't wanna have to go looking for a whole bunch of things that I probably wasn't gonna be able to find right about now. So I went looking online and I found this really great recipe by a fellow YouTuber, Chell Sweets, and it contains 
five simple ingredients and your colors of choice and you can also use your microwave to heat it up so that should be really simple in theory so we are going to start by taking our quarter cup of water and sprinkling our two tablespoons of gelatin powder in the water then we're going to take our fork and we're just going to mix it up until it's fully incorporated And we're going to set this aside and let it bloom. So for the next part of the recipe, it calls for one and a half cups of granulated sugar, three quarters of a cup of room temperature water, and two thirds of a cup of sweetened condensed milk. So we're going to take these three ingredients and we're going to mix them all up in one microwave safe bowl. And then we're going to microwave it on high for one minute. So now we're going to take our mixture and we're going to mix it up really well until it's fully incorporated. Then once we have it completely mixed up, we are going to add our bloom gelatin. So the next thing we need to do is melt our chocolate chips. So the recipe calls for two full cups of white chocolate chips, although I only have a cup and a quarter myself. I just have one full bag of 225 grams. But her recipe did say at the bottom that if you use a little less white chocolate, it should give a glossier finish for a little bit longer. So we're just gonna pop this in the microwave for 30 second intervals, mixing in between each, each interval until fully melted. Okay, so our chocolate is almost fully melted. I just need to pop it in for a few more seconds. But before I do, I just wanna say thanks for watching. I'm having so much fun making these cakes for you guys. And I really hope you're enjoying the video. If you do, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. And if you have any tips or tricks that I might not know about that you would like to share, I'd love to hear about, hear about them as well. Okay, so our chocolate's fully melted and it's time to add it to our gelatin mixture. So I'm gonna add everything into a larger bowl here and we are gonna use our whisk to mix it up until it's fully incorporated. Okay, so once you have everything blended nicely, you can go ahead and add a little bit of white food coloring. So that way we end up with a nice white base so our colors will really pop. So now that I'm finished mixing my white, I'm gonna go ahead and strain this into another container and preferably something with a handle. Now, this is a very important step because you wanna make sure to get out as many air bubbles as possible so it doesn't ruin the finish of your mirror glaze. And now we're gonna divide our mixture into four small portions for our accent colors and reserving a large amount for our main base color. So I'm gonna be using teal for my main base color and a little bit of yellow, green, purple, and pink for my accent colors. And in my yellow, I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of gold dust for a little extra sparkle. So I'm just gonna start out with a very, very tiny amount of food color and it's very important that you use gel food colors I've read as you don't want to use a water base because it could affect the consistency of your mixture so like I said I'm just going to use a tiny small amount of food color because we're just going for a pastel effect all right so we have a nice pretty teal blue color here I think teal has to be one of my favorite colors teal and purple actually so I'm gonna actually Put my candy thermometer in this and set this aside and we're going to let it cool until it reaches 90 degrees fahrenheit which is perfect pouring temperature so we're going to move on to our smaller mixtures now and i'm going to start off with my pink working all the way to yellow with a little bit of gold mixed in and then we're going to go grab our cake and get it ready to pour all right so i finished mixing up all my colors and i have to say i'm a little bit disappointed in my yellow i can't really see much gold in there and it makes it a little bit darker than i would like it to be so I added a little bit of white food color and yellow food color, and I think it should turn out pretty. So we're gonna go grab our cake and we're gonna get it ready. And as soon as these guys hit 90 degrees Fahrenheit, we're gonna start pouring everything on top. All right, so our cake is ready and it's time to pour. So as you'll see, I've placed my cake on top of a cookie sheet with a small cake pan underneath to prop up our cake. So that way when we pour the glaze on, it'll drip all off and it will land in the cookie sheet and not all over the place. 
So I'm going to start with my blue and I'm going to pour it out all over the top and get a nice even coat. And then I'm going to come in with my accent colors and create some little cool designs. And I'm going to let that drip for a second and then I'm going to come in with my colors. Alright guys, it's all done and I think that looks so cool. The pattern turned out really, really neat. Not bad for my first try if I do say so myself. So we're going to let this drip dry a little bit and then we're going to come in and clean up our edges and get our cake onto the cake board and then we're all finished. Alright, so to get rid of all these little drips that have started to firm up, we're going to use our offset spatula and we're just going to scrape them off and wipe them off. Then we're going to put a little bit of icing on our cake board and transfer our cake to our cake board. Now to transfer our cake to our cake board. Wish me luck. Alright guys, here it is. And that's how you make a mirror glaze cake. And I'd love to know what you guys think about it, so you can let me know down below. And also don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring that bell, do all the things. Because every action you take helps my channel grow. Thank you so much, and thanks for watching.